If you're learning about microcontrollers, circuits, and maybe a bit of software, some Python to go on the microcontroller, it's really good to have a project that you can start, take it all the way through to completion, and have that satisfaction, and learn something along the way. So in this video, I want to show you how you can make a digital dice set. You need a little display, a microcontroller, and a button. When you press the button, you get a new value, random value for your dice. You can use it for simple games where you need just one dice, or ones where you need two, or even some of these more fancy ones where you need a, a D20 or something like that. And this video is going to cover it all. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so first of all, a quick demo. Here is our Raspberry Pi, a breadboard, some buttons, and the display. And as you can see here, there's a dice showing a die, I think technically, when there's one. So that's a five. And if you press this button here, it will spin and give us uh, other representations as we go along. The second button allows us to pick the dice. So now we can go to an eight sided dice. It will just give us a number between uh, one and eight. You can bump that up to 10 or to 12. When it's on 12, it will do two uh, dice, like uh, if it was just rolling a pair of dice like that. And then if you go up to 20, you can get a 20 sided dice and that will just give you a number between one and 20. And then I think there's also a four sided one. Yeah, just gives you a number between one and four. So very simple. You get to pick the device dice and then you get to roll it by pressing the button digital dice. OK, so let's get into this digital dice, a great project for beginners. So what you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi Pico or a Raspberry Pi Pico 2. In fact, you could use any microcontroller that you're familiar with, whether that's an Arduino or something else that runs uh, MicroPython. I'm going to show you today with MicroPython and the Raspberry Pi Pico, of course, it can be achieved uh, with a variety of different boards, uh, just depending on what you're familiar with and what you already have. And you're going to need a small display. Here I'm using a 0.91 inch uh, OLED display. These are great little displays. They don't cost very much quite tiny obviously but they just need four pins or two of which are power pins so they can be connected up really easily and they're easy to program again from micro python as we're going to see you're going to need those two buttons for being able to roll the dice and for selecting what type of dice you want to use a breadboard to put it all together some wires to connect through uh, in that breadboard and then a pc to run thony and download the micro python program onto the raspberry pi Pico. Now, if you're into microcontrollers at all, I'm sure you've got all that lot on hand. If you're just getting into microcontrollers, then that's actually quite a good set of things that you would need to acquire anyway, because from here you can make all kinds of different projects. So not an, an unusual list and a good starting list. Okay, so as I showed you in the video, this is what the device uh, looks like. This is what we're going to try and build. Now, basically, you've got the Raspberry Pi Pico here the display, the two buttons, and these are all the various wires that you need. Now, my wiring isn't particularly uh, brilliant, isn't up to the standard of, let's say, Ben Eater, for example. He seems to be a genius at doing the wiring. Mine's kind of more hack-it-together kind of wiring, but I'm going to show you as a diagram what that lot all does. My biggest failure, if I say, is this one here, connecting the positive power rail here all the way across to the positive power rail here. There are probably 20 other different ways I could have done that much nicer. Certainly wouldn't need to go under all the other wires, but that's how I ended up doing it. Uh, and so you can do a better job than me. But let me show you what it is logically. So here is the same thing logically, the Raspberry Pi Pico, the two buttons and the display. And here I'm showing the uh, pinout, which shows you what these different things are. So first thing you need to do is connect up the display. And so I'm doing that by connecting the SCL pin to GPIO 15, pin 20, but it's called GPIO 15. I'm getting the SDA pin to GPIO 14, and we'll use both of those in the micro Python code. Then the other two pins go to ground and to the 3.3 volts, and I'll show you more about how you do that logically uh, in a moment, but that's there, the power, and these are the two data ones. And then for the button, so these buttons are uh, pretty amazing, really. So basically, uh, you can uh, these two sides are always connected together and when you press the button all four become connected together so basically you go from pin to pin across here 
and really it's got four pins but it's the same as a two pin one so you press the button and they connect so you want one side connected to the ground and one side connected to pin 15 which is gpio 11 and in the code we can say is it connected is it not connected so that's pretty simple and we do the same on the other side in this case to pin 22 gpio 17 and again to the negative to the ground uh, here now the way you get those grounds connected up is basically you want all you want that positive connected up somehow to the 3.3 volts is why i've got that ugly bit of wiring i was talking about and you also want the grounds connected to a ground pin so you can either do it uh, directly to different pins or you can put it on the ground rail there on the uh, breadboard but you need ground and 3.3 um, volts and then one two three four different gpio pins connected up you can do that this thing will work now when we get to the micro python code very very simple so we're going to use i squared c that's what that small device uses why i only need two pins so we're going to use soft i squared c which means it does it all in software without relying on any i squared c hardware on the board of course the raspberry pico does have hardware i squared c and then we define the width and the height in our code because we're going to need that as we're doing different things and then you basically initialize this display and it is an ssd 1306 display driver that's the driver and then you de you decide tell it what type of display it's got on there really simple that's it now up and running and the other thing we're going to do is interrogate the button so here is how we're going to interrogate the select button which is the one that goes through the different dice as you can see six 8, 10, 12, 20, uh, and then 4. Those are the different uh, die selections we've got. Current die selection index is 0. That means this 6 here. And we've preloaded it with the actual value of 6. And basically, we're going to, every time you press the button, we're going to go through this list, bump up one through this list, loop back round again when necessary. And you're going to change the index and change the value as you do that. So what do you do? You say if the button selected is 0. Now, it's worth noting here that the spin button and the select button are both pull up which means we want uh, they're going to be high by default when they're not on they're high now you can do it the other way around i've connected these to ground which means they're going to be high and then you when you connect it to ground you get that circuit through to ground and then so you want to actually want to check for zero if you do it the other way around with pull down then it's going to be the other way around but this is what i've done here so it's if it's zero that means it's connected to ground because you've pressed the button it's connected through to ground uh, and then basically what you want to do is because it's on these little buttons it's very easy to kind of press and then press again because it's just a mechanical switch so it's called bouncing so you just wait a very very short amount of time to make sure that you haven't had a double bounce happening there and then you check again is it still zero if it is oh that means that someone they have pressed it so that's great so if they have pressed it you want to increment the index that's this one here started at zero one two like that you want to make sure if you get to the end of the list you go back to the beginning and go back to zero and then you want to set the current value to be whatever the value is in that list so now it's six it'll become eight then it'll become ten i print that out just for my own debug purposes here okay then you blank the display by filling it with black and then i've got this function here called print num which we'll dive into some of how i'm doing the printing in a minute and you basically uh, give it that current value 6 8 10 so we can scroll through them you pass in oled which is what we defined in the previous uh bit snippet of code zero zero top left hand corner and then you basically wait in here until they let go of the button so it's really simple when the button is pressed just change the uh current dice value that you're using and show it on the screen now for showing things on the screen there are some built-in functions for printing directly onto the screen but the font tends to be quite small because they want you to give you three or four lines of stuff so i've defined my own one so here for example is a zero defined as an eight by eight pixel array and here is a one defined by an eight by eight and maybe you can't see that but if we color them in there you can see it more clearly so it's a zero uh, and a one and i've also done the same things for the dice faces uh and this one's a bit bigger 16 by 16 uh i hope you can see that and do it differently so i'll put all the zeros to black so there you can see that's a two uh, on a dice face and basically it's really simple you just i've got this little function blit digit okay you give it an x and y coordinate you've given it the display you told it which digit which is basically those arrays one of these arrays here 
So where it's a zero or a one, you just give it this set of ones and zeros and you go through and because the display is actually much bigger, we do four pixels. And the reason I'm doing that is it means I can actually don't have to spend so much time filling in, you know, 32 by 32 uh, pixels to define all the numbers. It, doing it in eight by eight is much quicker. So basically for every one or zero, we either we put in four pixels uh, wide and four pixels down. And as you can see here, it just plots those four pixels. There's a pixel. Uh, function that comes for part of this display driver and then you every time we get to the end of a row which means the pixel width we just want to jump down by four pixels on the display so although actually these lists are flat we're seeing them as a grid so every time you get to the end of a line get down to the next line and i've got a similar one for the dice pretty simple all this code uh, is in my github repository so pretty simple you just go through if it's a one you plot a pixel there you go if one if it's a zero you just move on because it's already black you don't need to plot a black pixel and you do that uh, and it gives you the letter really simple and then it works uh, as i showed you in the demo so there you go a really interesting uh, little microcontroller project to help you learn and understand the principles of what you need to do of course you can extend this to all kinds of things anything that needs buttons and display you can go down this path and you're going to be able to create something. Love to hear your thoughts if there are any other projects you'd like me to cover here on this channel. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around and subscribe to the channel. Please also make sure you check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.